thank you for uh, this invitation. Uh, uh, good, uh, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, <laughs> everybody. I'm going to tell a bit about my uh, perspective on uh, the scientific applications uh, and some examples of uh, of the tools that that we developed. Uh, so. Uh, uh, okay, of course, yeah, the, the background is simple that, yeah, scientific scientists, researchers never have too much computing power. So there are various ways of uh, trying to get uh, these uh, uh, resources for research, yeah, including supercomputers, clusters, uh, even some alternative methods like volunteer computing. Uh, and then, of course, cloud and serverless is uh, coming uh, into play. So, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, we we cannot fully replace supercomputers with uh, serverless. But uh, what is interesting is to find, yeah, in which cases, which applications uh, are suitable for serverless, and how we can improve serverless model to fit uh, broader classes of uh, of these applications so this uh, this is what we mm, we're trying to do and uh, yeah some of the examples i mean already mentioned by bartos in a previous talk uh, is, is our scientific workflows and yeah we did some uh, experiments with cloud functions serverless containers uh, getting uh, yeah some really promising results uh, but of course yeah mm, if this doesn't fit all the scenarios uh, so especially the cases where we have uh, some long running jobs in the workflow and at the same time we have these uh, short running jobs so uh, <clears throat> yeah mm, uh, one way is to try find this unified uh, model as Bartosz was presenting, or the, another approach is to, which is also quite complex, yeah, is to combine uh, uh, different uh, solutions to different tasks. So, for example, uh, running this longer, uh, bigger, fatter, heavier uh, tasks uh, on some containers, uh, even VMs. Uh, uh, and then these uh, lightweight uh, tasks that are uh, highly parallel on cloud functions. Yeah, so this is uh, one option we can mm, uh, consider here. Uh, uh, but also there are some examples of applications that need some dedicated uh, user or application-specific solutions. And one example we did uh, with our uh, colleagues from uh, CERN, uh, is to um, provide support for data analysis in high energy physics. So they are using their um, root uh, framework in C++, also with some Python extensions for data analysis. Uh, Typically, they run some big loop over the events in their data sets to filter out this interesting uh, events. Uh, uh, but the recent uh, extension is uh, our data frame abstraction, which they introduced. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it allows for... for running these uh, queries in the higher level format as you are, uh, as we are familiar in, in data science. Mm, and there are multiple backends uh, to this uh, data frame. And yeah, one that uh, uh, we developed was based on the AWS Lambda. Uh, mm, so the functions uh, are used for basically running this uh, kind of map reduce tasks uh, in in this uh, in this whole uh, processing workflow so it's a kind of similar to apache spark where you have this uh, individual i mean th this high level description translated into the graph of tasks uh, 
Uh, and we, yeah, in our experiments, we achieved some some good speed up till uh, up to uh, hundreds of concurrent functions. But of course, yeah, depending on the data size, we see that it's not that good when the uh, real data needs to be transferred uh, directly from CERN to Amazon uh, data centers. Uh, and uh, uh, because th then it becomes uh, yeah, the data becomes a bottleneck. So we are also now working on some um, um, optimizations, caching, transferring part of the data to, to cloud. Uh, um, so there is an interesting work uh, to, 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 to continue this. Uh, then another example comes from computational medicine. Yeah, so in our... Uh, uh, Sano Center and yeah, everywhere in, in this domain, uh, uh, people develop uh, computational models. It can be yeah, different types of simulations like blood flow simulation represented as an electrical circuit, uh, for example, um, here. And uh, yeah, the, the interesting uh, or also computational demanding problem is this uh, VVUQ verification validation uncertainty quantification when basically we need to run uh, multiple tasks with various parameters uh, to um, to see how the model behaves uh, how the errors uh, in or variations in input influence the outputs and what is the stability sensitivity of that so we developed a cloud VVUQ library based on uh, existing Python easy VVUQ tool. Uh, and also, yeah, there are some cases, classes of models which are uh, nicely fitting. So some of the tasks are uh, quite fast, quite quick, so they can fit into this cloud functions. But on the other hand, yeah, it's also a challenge when we have some bigger models and then uh, yeah, this uh, cloud functions uh, limitations uh, don't uh, don't allow to to run such such, such big models. So then we need containers and uh, other um, other approaches. Uh, and also from the server side, let's say of the serverless. Uh, uh, we did some experiment with extending OpenWhisk uh, for using uh, unused uh, uh, HPC resources. So if we have a, a big cluster with tens, uh, tens of thousands of cores, and then you have even 1% uh, of it uh, idle, uh, we can actually use, build up of it a dynamic cluster of OpenWhisk with hundreds of cores. Uh, on average available so it required some extension to open risk to 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 actually dynamically handle this coming and going uh, on on and off uh, worker nodes uh, but then yeah the over the, the workload is quite dynamic i mean the, the resources are changing dynamically but then yeah we couldn't uh, build an overlay and run this um, open whisk jobs and this is especially interesting for some kind of monte carlo uh, applications uh, uh, which in which the fault tolerance is quite natural yeah because if you even lose some of the jobs basically nothing happens you just need to have bigger statistics uh, Okay, so uh, yeah, in in summary, uh, uh, I think that yeah, the scientific serverless computing is uh, really an interesting direction. It's not a mainstream, but something mm -hmm. yeah, quite uh, quite interesting to to explore. And of course, the developments are needed both in the uh, generic frameworks front, like this hyperflow for workflows or some generic data analytics frameworks, but also application specific solutions are important. And this is an interesting also niche, like users are used to their um, tools. Yeah, so when we provide some serverless backends, we can uh, get yeah some significant speed ups quite easily for them, uh, which is nice for, for adoption of these models. Uh, but also, of course, yeah, the challenges of, uh, infrastructures and uh, applications also 
require some server side developments, like uh, for example, this HPC whisk. Uh, so yeah, there are multiple <laughs> areas where um, we work on and try to get some improvements. And yeah, I think that's it. So <laughs> right, <laughs> there are yeah. questions, you know, how to find me. <laughs> Thank you, Maciej. Uh, actually, we have time for one quick question, uh, if anyone has one. Um, I have one, a quick one for both you and Bartosz. Um, so a lot of the, the work you guys are doing are looking at um, kind of the performance aspects of uh, you know, scientific computing, but there's also an important management aspect of you know, uh, reproducibility and provenance. Um, and I'm wondering if like running on serverless makes that problem harder. Well, uh, partially, I mean, uh, yeah, it's harder yeah, because you have to deploy it and then the infrastructure can be uh, behave differently from day to day uh, and so on. Uh, one uh, good, uh, probably, um, side uh, is that, uh, uh, yeah, when we have containers, yeah, uh, it somehow uh, enforces uh, the users to, okay, to, to containerize the applications and then, yeah, the containers are uh, portable and then they uh, they help yeah with reproducibility so uh, so there are some you know, downsides and, and advantages i would say okay. yeah fair enough always trade-offs um yeah thanks thanks much hey um yeah.